It's my pleasure to start the 13th session in this prestigious conference. I start by thanking uh, Dr. Bahbah, Wael Bahbah, Dr. Zanun, Hamad Zanun, على دعوتنا إلى هذا المؤتمر وتمنياتنا بدوام التوفيق والنجاح مش هنضيع وقت طويل لأننا already we are behind time I'm going to start presenting uh, Dr. Flavia Andrew from Espagan uh, Committee she's going to speak to us about uh, up to date subject we are going to speak about it, to listen to microbiota and nutrition in the first golden 1,000 days of life. Uh, Salam alaikum. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for presentation. I want to thank you, Dr. Wahal, for this kind invitation. And if I knew that Alan uh, Lucas was in my same session, I would, I would have changed topics because Alan is the pioneer of programming and uh, the first 1,000 days. So basically, he already said almost all the concepts. So maybe, no, this is not working. Because this, yeah, looks like this. I will, it's, is this working? Okay, then it will be much better for me. So I would have changed because Alan already mentioned almost all the concept, but let's go step by step and see what I can do it uh, from new and new uh, evidence of this microbiota nutrition in this first 1,000 day. So this should be the summary, but generally we can also consider this as uh, uh, the learning objective. So. In the first 1,000 days, the first 1,000 days are considered the pregnancy and until one year of age. So what is happening during this 1,000 days can set the health of our future. And they are strictly depending on nutrition, as we are before, and are from microbiome and epigenoma. Also, Professor Islam before start the concept of epigenetics, but I just want to underline some other concept. The epigenetics regulates the gene expression. That means that we receive some genes from our father and our mother, but our DNA is not our destiny. So we have the opportunity to change because this is the, the cells of the fetal origin and from these cells came a lot of tissue. So this happened during the fetal period and this gene can be regulated and changed. So the central dogma of epigenetics is this. So we have a DNA and a template to make the uh, mRNA with the transcription and then to make the protein with the translation and so the protein works. So epigenetic mechanism goes on transcription and translation. So we can have different protein at the very end of the process. And what is the gene expressed and what is the gene expressed and how long is the gene being expressed? So all these three parameters can be changed by the epigenetics. So we do require epigenetic mechanism because the, we share a lot of uh, information stored in our DNA. So if the, the, we go to a wrong information, we can produce a wrong protein. And if we go, sorry, for a good one, look, this is the bad, and otherwise we can have with the transcription, I'm sorry, I'm messing with this, we can have a good transcription and a good protein. So we can have different possibility to express by the genes. And how this is happen, this is the chromatin, they enlarge on the nucleosome, and there is a change in DNA methylation on the protein. And with this, everything can be changed from the original part of DNA. Also can be other uh, process like methylation, acetylation, and phosphorylation. All these procedures that can happen together into the intestine related to nutrition and microbiota. Because as you can see, the intestine have a lumen and we arbor this huge amount of microbes. Moreover, we have all the process, not only of digestion and absorption, but we have also the process of 
uh, immune, uh, immune uh, regulation and neuronal regulation. Because the intestine, again, is not only a digestive and absorptive organs, but is a versatile uh, organ. So it's the largest immune organ of the body. It's arbor, the huge um, uh, microbial system, and arbor, a dentaric nervous system. So the role of the microbiote into the intestine is fundamental, because if we have a special uh, uh, nutrients and a special microbiote, we can drive the maturation of intestinal function. And there are a lot of studies that show that the changing in microbiota and nutrients can change gut morphology with villous architecture and crypt depth, change the stem cell proliferation, the blood vessel density, the mucus layer properties, and the maturation of mucosal associated lymphoid tissue. If we have an action of all this intestinal function, we have for sure an uh, uh, effect on uh, uh, other sides of the body. And exactly why? Because, and also motility, because look at this. This is the epithelial layer. If we have a leaky gut, a leaky epithelial layer because of changing of nutrients and microbiota, we can have an effect on neur neuronal inflammation of immune system and we can again predispose ourselves to allergy as we had already before or to autoimmune disorder and all this also have an effect on cognitive and behavior. So whatever is happening into the intestine do not remain into the intestine. We change intestinal function with different microbes and with different uh, nutrients and we change also the effect on brain and autoimmune and allergic disorder. So back a little bit on nutrients. So we, as uh, again, I'm so agree about what Alan Lucas said that is so important and to take care of nutrients that the goal, the global target for 2025 for the World Health Organization is to improve maternal, infant, and young nutrition. Because it's been seen that it's not only a matter to intake, there is also other effect of different kind of nutrition. Not only the nutritional status, but also we have to improve the gene expression and regulation all of the mechanisms of epigenetics. So why is it so important? Because we have to care also to the maternal nutrition because the maternal microbiota also change the possibility of fatal development. And the infant microbiota is important to develop and to regulate the immune system. And again, the early nutrition environment and microbiota of the mother can make a fingerprint of the microbiota and change this non-communicable disease, what I'll show you before with this epigenetic translation, epigenetic production of different protein can then protect or predispose to other diseases in life. But why is so important? Just some few words about the immune system. So when the, the baby is born, is born immune suppressed because they have to survive into, into the womb of the mother. So whenever they have this innate immunity, they have to regulate for the acquired immunity. If something goes wrong within the seven or eight days with different microbes, with different dysbiosis, so we can have an altered process that can develop us, can, can develop in the baby not only allergy, but also autoimmune disorder. So when from where these microbes came from. So the microbes of the baby came from, during the pregnancy, the maternal diet and the early infancy diet, and they have a dramatic effect on long-term health. So develop of a gut microbiota in the baby. This is a very, uh, there's a, a lot of, argu of arguing of this, and of course the role of breastfeeding. But let's go to talk a little bit in this different pathway of fetal colonization. Now, I mean, everybody of us, I think, in this room have been trained at the university on this sterile womb paradigm. That means that the, the amniotic fluid is sterile, so meconium is sterile, Fetus is born with an intestine that is sterile, okay? And so if we are agree on this, 
way of delivery, cesarean section of uh, vaginal delivery is extremely important in the colonization of the fetus. Just let's stay a little bit on this first sterile one paradigm. And so there are a lot of studies that show that the baby that are born with a vaginal delivery have a protection of this uh, uh, eubiosis, so they are colonized by a uh, uh, good microbes, and so they are protecting in the intestinal gut microbiola environment, and they have a very differential, a very um, uh, changing in microbiota, a lot of differential uh, bacteria, and so they are protected against a lot of disease. So they have uh, uh, the baby who born with C-section, they have a different microbiota and abnormal uh, uh, immunity development, and they have a higher odds of allergic rhinitis, asthma, celiac disease, type 1 diabetes, gastroenteritis, allergy, and obesity. So this was stressing this concept. You know, 10 years ago, everybody was agree on this. And so, okay, if we have a baby with C-section, could we partially restore the microbiota of C-section baby with the vaginal microbial transfer. So a lot of uh, uh, science, a lot of uh, publication went for this vaginal womb. So just let's take uh, a swab from the vaginal mother and just cover the skin of the baby. So we can restore the vagina if the baby is born C-section. So there was this study, and so they just uh, uh, decide to uh, say, Vaginal 7, C-section 11, swab, no swab. And what they show was this, that there was a restitution of vaginal microbes. So this was a nice paper published on Nature Medicine on February 2016 that say, okay, maybe the vaginal swab is working. But after all, the, uh, the practice advisor of American College of Obstetrician and Gynecology say we recommend against the practice of vaginal seeding until better data are available and safety and benefits of practice. Do you imagine if this mother that underwent two C-section had a vaginal dysbiosis or had a streptococcus infection in the vagina undetected? So we just took this seeding and put on the skin of the baby. So what would be the problem? So that's why the American College of Obstetrics say it's better we wait for other uh, evidence to come. But let's go back a little bit to this in utero colonization hypothesis. Since 2000 and, uh, let's say, 10 or 11, scientists start to discover some microbes into the amniotic fluid and into the meconium. So they say the colonization of the baby start in the uterus. So the microbiome of the mother is important because the fetus start to swallowing at 16 weeks of gestational age all the amniotic fluid. So all the fluids that are into the, uh, all of the microbes that are into the amniotic fluid start to colonize the, uh, the fetus. And so that is some, uh, some uh, uh, research that just say that 50% of the microbes in the meconium were also found in the amniotic fluid. So maybe the baby, the, the fetus is not sterile, is not sterile anymore because now we are improving the technique to detect microbes. And so now the concept is this, no more uh, uh, diet, new concept is not only mother, and fetus, but also the microbes. So we create a community, maternal microbiota can influence with placenta unique, a harbor, uh, harbor a unique microbiota. So microbiota of the placenta, microbiota of the mother just can affect the uh, metabolism of the fetus. And so this, from, from where come from? From the mother intestine, and it's extremely important now, the oral microbiota of the mother. So we have to consider in total view the microbiota of the mother. That's why nutrition in the mother is extremely important because there is any other effect that change the microbiota but nutrition because we eat three times a day. So we just introduce in our intestine different kind of molecules that can change the microbiota. And other things that affect a lot 
microbiota and nutrition during the pregnancy, and so during this first 1,000 days, is the use of antibiotics. So we have a lot of use of antibiotics. Later on, I will talk about antimicrobial resistance. So we have the preterm that have Anti, uh, they have the, within the 48 hours ampicillin is the most used drugs and so these microbes, this antimicrobial just change all the microbes, change the ma ma microbial metabolism and change all the resistance. So what is happening is this, we have a balanced community that has been totally destroyed by the antibiotic and if this came in the first 48 hours of life on the first seven days so the pattern of colonization is going to change dramatically and look at this it's been oh this no this maybe oh sorry this has been published one week ago it just came out so if we change during the uh, birth during the first seven days the microbes this could affect until four years of age those babies who have different colonization at birth because of use of antibiotics because of preterm birth they will have a different microbiote pattern until they have four years of age no matter what kind of food they take it no matter what is the variable factors they come from they have a set of microbes different for four years of age so role of breast milk because breast milk is supposed to be the, the golden uh, 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 nutrients for the first 1,000 days. Well, at least we, uh, Aspen Committee of Nutrition and World Health Organization strongly recommend breast milk until one year of age, even if the weaning could start at five months of age, but everybody is, is pushing to uh, use breast milk until one year of age. So, role of breast milk is crucial because the improved rate of breast milk late, I mean, we heard about Alan, and Alan was a pioneer. He, saw, he, he said these things 30 years ago, and so improve health and development for children, improve health for women, and improve cognitive development, learning, education, productivity. We heard about the EQ that is rising, so I don't have to spend any other words in favor of breast milk because everybody knows and so we have a short-term effect with protection against gastrointestinal infection reduced risk of allergy especially in the preterm baby reduced the necrotizing enterocolitis and infant death and of course the long-term effect is uh, overweight obesity and lower blood pressure as Alan already showed and also behavior and never development outcome so there are a lot of bioactive compounds in the milk that just start to be discovered. The last one were these stem cells, the multipotential stem cells in the breast milk. And this is a last, uh, a last uh, uh, finding. We find, they find fungi into the microbiome, into the breast milk microbiome. So prebiotic, probiotic, fungi, stem cells, bioactive compounds. So we have to breastfeed our baby. And during this critical window of opportunity where this epigenome can interact for nutrition with nutrition and microbes is the first 1,000 days. Because after all, generally after the first, first and a half years, the microbiome is settled to the adult age. So we have the more effect when we use this interaction during this period. So what we can see, like, as take on my touch, that the maternal factor, like diet, genotype, and delta of the mother, and the milk microbiome are important in healthy disease, not only for the children age, but also during the adult. That perinatal factor, like uh, uh, delivery mode, antibiotics, lactation, and uh, gestational age are extremely important because they have long-term and short-term consequences. Breast milk is important because you have bioactive compounds, so breast milk, again, it's the most biological impact uh, nutrients we do have in gut development and also in health uh, programming later in life. So again, maternal nutrition is extremely important and uh, we can just take care also for the microbiome, that is another actor. We have the nutrients, they act with the microbes, the microbes act with the genes, and we are safe and sure later on in life. So I thank you very much, and please ask me whatever you want. Thanks. 
Thank you very much for this uh, very interesting uh, talk. Um, I agree 100% with all what you said about the presence of bacteria in the amniotic fluid. Because uh, recently we, we did uh, a study in Cairo University hospitals uh, about the microbiome profile of the amniotic fluid even in ladies uh, delivering by cesarean section. And uh, really, uh, we found uh, hundreds and thousands of bacterial species inside the amniotic fluid, which we used to, to think that uh, it is sterile. But the thing that uh, um, I want to ask, is the type of nutrient of the mother affects her microbiome, the, the, the amniotic fluid microbiome? Yep. Yes, uh, thank you for the question. Absolutely, the, question, the answer is yes. The nutrients affect the microbiome. So whenever the mother is having a, a good nutrition with vitamin and uh, uh, other food like DHA or other protein or omega-3 uh, fatty acid, we, they change the microbiome because the microbiome of a pregnant woman resembles one of the obese woman. And so whatever they change, is also there is a changing. And it's extremely important, the overall health of the woman. So infection needs to be cured because any infection changes the microbiome. So microbiome change quickly with nutrients, with antibiotics, and with infection. So we have to take the care of the whole health of the mother and, of course, more focus on nutrition. Absolutely, you are right. Yes, thank you very much. Any question? Any question? Maria, the, the route that you um, um, depicted for bacteria getting into the amniotic fluid is a route that would exist in a non-pregnant mother. So theoretically, that, um, that collection of organisms would already be there in the uterus at the point where the um, uh, embryo first implants. So do you think that the bacterial environment of a developing ovum um, is actually uh, relevant. I mean, this is presumably a non-sterile, the uterus, the way you've depicted, it is a non-sterile environment, even for very early development. So if I get the question, you say that uh, the, 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 the um, bacteria that came from the intestine of the mother already colonized the uterus before the conception. Well, the route, the, the route that you the route drew, they go is is the, is the that route would exist theoretically. Even, theoretically, theoretically, yeah. yeah, they are studying to know how is the route. Maybe they come from the oral, maybe yeah. they come from the intestine, maybe they come. They can just have. Um, it's not really known how this bacteria reach the amniotic fluid. Right. Supposed to be sterile. That's why they still they have two people that believe or not believe in this mm -hmm. kind. So some people say there's no way for the bacteria to reach the amniotic fluid. But we know exactly that we can have some metabolites that cross the blood barrier mm -hmm. and then can go and colonize the amniotic fluid. Mm -hmm. This is still an open question for study and scientists. So the scientists who are in favor of this uh, in utero colonization start now to uh, show what is the, exactly the root of colonization. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Not yet clear. Um. The bloodstream, it's, uh, it's arguing because they say if there is a bloodstream, then you have a bacteria translocation. So suppose that the bacteria goes through bloodstream is not yet confirmed. But this is one hypothesis. Yes, you're right. Bloodstream could be one hypothesis. I'm more convinced, I have to be sincere, but this is my personal opinion, of course we need study, is that there are some bacterial metabolites product that can cross the, the blood barrier and can start the colonization. This is my, 
But uh, we'll see. In a couple of years, we will have the final results. Yeah, can I have a question, please? Uh, please. Uh, um, what do you mean, thank you for uh, your lecture, it's very interesting and uh, a lot of uh, information, but what do you mean by a thousand days? Do you mean the ones even during pregnancy or after birth or the thousand days that you're uh, mentioning here, the first thousand, one thousand day? That means during also pregnancy and, uh, and postnatal? Uh, do you, the question is, uh, uh, what is most important, the, the no, pregnancy? No, I mean, no. the thousand days, is the three years after uh, birth? Uh, or, no, the first one thousand days is considered the pregnancies and the first two years of life. Okay, okay. That means that the colonizations happens, as you said, starting from 16, uh, 16th uh, week of... Uh, uh, if you follow, it's not my, I mean, there are two, yes, two opinions now. Uh -huh. They say, if we have in utero colonization, it's because the amniotic fluid, as professors say, is not sterile. So mm. the baby is inside the womb starts to swallow amniotic fluid because the swallowing process is complete at 16 weeks of gestation. Right. Okay? So the baby starts to swallow this amniotic fluid and the, uh, they start to colonize the, the intestine. There is also this theory, they say, if you have a dysbiosis into the amniotic fluid, this could be maybe the possible cause of preterm delivery. Mm -hmm. Because who is deciding the time of delivery is not the mother, but is the baby. When the baby is not more comfortable into the womb, he says, red light, red light, I want to go out. So sometimes they say, if we have a dysbiotic amniotic fluid, we have a disinflammated fatal intestine, and so this can trigger the mm. preterm labor. But this is a theory who needs still study. It's not yet confirmed, because there are a lot of scientists that believe still on the sterile womb hypothesis. So, I just report what you is didn't do study uh, immediately after birth to the colonization of the immediately. They say we have also a changing immediately after birth because if you born vaginal, then you cross the vagina and reach all the lactobacilli that are in the vagina. If you born C-section, you reach the gloves of the surgeon. And so the colonization is different. But if the colonization starts already in utero, you have already a core of microbiome. That's what I'm saying. If you are doing it immediately after birth, you're going to decide almost which one is the, is the right uh, hypothesis. Exactly. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. It's, yeah. So it's decided that the bacteria is present even uh, before birth. Yeah. 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 You mentioned uh, the omega, and is it, you know, direct through the health of the mother, or it, it uh, alters the microbiome itself? I mean, I know it is still, you know, as you said, two opinions, and who say omega-3 is very helpful and say still, you know, borderline. So what, what's your opinion? Because you mentioned omega-3, isn't it? Uh, uh, DHA omega-3 is extremely important in the nutrition of the pregnant woman and because they just settled all the cells construction. So it's a matter of DHA, for instance. DHA is now every, every formula, every milk formula now contain DHA. So do, you do need this kind of uh, fatty acid for the cell membrane processes and whatever. So definitely you need this during the, lacta during the pregnancy for the mother nutrition, yes. Excuse me. Uh, actually, I'm an old fashioned doctor and I don't believe we can find any of the bacteria in the places we think uh, we have studied since we were uh, young students. We know very well that it's dry. If there is bacteria in the amniotic fluid, I don't think that we can culture bacteria, complete bacteria, with its capsule, with its uh, chromosomes, with its uh, cytoplasm, and everything, complete bacteria. I think 
I think it's not based on any uh, work done. I think that the genome of the bacteria can be, can travel across the cell membranes and can reach the amniotic fluid, not the whole bacteria. If the whole bacteria reaches the amniotic fluid, it's going to be sepsis, there is going to be infection, there is going to be uh, a lot of possibilities which can uh, lead to sacrificing this uh, pregnancy. Like, uh, but uh, the genome of the bacteria, the same theory which happened uh, corresponds to presence of the uh, mitochondria in our cells. It says that mitochondria is the genome of certain bacteria which has been, there is, has been symbiosis between it and between the, uh, our cells. But presence of the whole bacteria, I don't think this is true. Excuse me. You are not alone. I mean, you are, not, you are not the only one who thinks like this. So that's why I say that this theory needs still to be uh, proved. So you are not alone in this thinking. And uh, there are two, two, two and that will be this, the, the, the topics for the next 10 years. Uh, yeah. uh, yes, but uh, the, the new uh, modalities and techniques for detecting this, the new sequencing technique, Dr. Maggit, proved that the amniotic fluid is not sterile and it harbors hundreds and hundreds, thousands of bacteria of different species. And not only bacteria, uh, bacteria, viruses, and uh, what is called the eukaryotes. Yep. So, it, uh, yani many, many, many papers has been published in, in the last four or five years, and until this year, uh, they, pr they are proving the, the presence of these different organisms, and different from uh, one country to the other, because the microbiome of the Europeans is different from the, the Asians, from the Americans, from Japan, and now we are starting to, to, to describe this in Egypt. No, no, no. No, no, it's the bacteria. No, no, bacteria. They detect. Because, because they make a, a PCR for them. Uh, but the, they, yes, but they made the but PCR. But if you have the DNA. If yes, the it's DNA, a DNA sequencing. If you have and the DNA, you just start producing some. Yes. Yes, but they made the PCR before making the sequencing. And the, 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 the uh, fluid, which proved to be PCR positive, they make the sequencing for it. Yeah. Uh, we'd like to come to a practical point. Now, can we detect, uh, can have an idea about the microbials prenatally? And is this place for using for antimicrobial to attack it before delivery? Do the question is if we can have some test. Uh -huh. It's very expensive. So uh, to test the microbiome of the mother now, it's extremely expensive. I mean, we are on the way to identify, I mean, for instance, if we talk of uh, sequencing the human genome, 20 years ago, it was something crazy. Now, for, with 1,000 euro, you go in the US, you sequence your DNA, human DNA. Now there is this microbiome project that are sequencing all the microbes. And, but it needs time, because we do not know everything about our microbiome. Now what we are looking for is to set a specific uh, signature, as I said before in the other lecture, in order to know, as you say, some signature that can just predispose to disease or something. But it's too early. It's too expensive now. We need to improve technique. Okay, so so yeah. as the human genome 20 years ago was like forbidden and now it's easy, so maybe in 20 years, my, human, um, microbes genome will be a little bit more accessible. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Yeah.